Year 10. Yep, year 10. It, has it flown by for you? Does it seem like it's been 10 years? Yeah, like in the moment, it, it seems like it's taking a while, but then you just look up and, you know, you were just a rookie and now you're year 10. So that's how all the vets explain it to me. And that, that's what I'm explaining to the younger players. Like, you're going to look up and it's time is going to have flown by. So try not to take it for granted. What does your body say to you? Because, I mean, I know, like, the other day, you went airborne and you just, mm -hmm. you know, fell kind of hard to the ground. Do you yep. start to feel those a little bit more? Or are you still able to brush it off like you used to? Uh, it's a little achy, but, yeah. I feel better than I did when I was younger. Much better. Mike, with, with uh, you know, you're, you're used to 1,000-yard seasons that are, you know, taken for granted. You play through a lot of injuries to, to get that amount of yardage. With, with four more seasons of 1,000 yards, you would move into – the top 10 all time for wide receivers in terms of the yardage. Do, do you do you think about that? And not that you're in the twilight of your career. I didn't even, I, I didn't know what I needed, but I know I was close to getting to that. Yeah. And that means a lot to me. You know, I'm a fan of the game. I always have been, you know, I've respected the game and, you know, hopefully, you know, God willing, I stay healthy and I'll get it done. And, and along those same lines, um, <clears throat> this year, you had the opportunity to match uh, a guy that was one of your idols and Randy Moss for second most all time, a thousand yard seasons. Um, I know that you have the most a thousand yard seasons from the start of a career, mm -hmm. what would that mean to you to be able to capture, um, to hold a, a record with someone that you looked up to so much? I mean, arguably he, he's the best receiver to ever play or definitely you know, top three in my opinion. And just to be in the same breath as all these guys is a tremendous honor, you know, and I don't take it for granted. Uh, it's just, it's cool. Something me and my family and friends always talk about and, uh, you know, it's happening. So I'm just trying to do my best to, to make it all happen. You said you feel better now than you did when you were younger. Yep. What do you know now that you didn't know then? What are you doing now? It's, it's life. You know, you live and you learn. And that's what I've been doing. I had a lot of great vets come in and show me the way. And I've picked their brains and seen what they've done. Tom, Gerald McCoy, Vincent Jackson, Shady. You know, all these guys, I got to see them prepare their bodies and things like that just to maintain that longevity. And you know, it's been helpful. I got chef. I got a chef in both places I live. That's helped me tremendously. And I work out, you know, way more than I did when I was younger. So that's helped too. Not just working out, but you know, you said you're smarter now than you were when you came to the league. The way you prepare, the way you obviously train, but mm -hmm. the way you see the field. How has that changed yeah. just over the last couple of years, especially with a guy like Tom? Who's Man, every every year the game changes. I remember when I was in college, and Casey Hampton, who's from my hometown, Galveston, Texas. I used to always talk to him because I was like the next guy up from Galveston to, to make it to the pros. And he would he would tell me that the game would slow down like I would never believe. And each year it happened. Like I swear the game slows down for me. I'm able to make adjustments during the game. And uh, you know, it's been cool. It's just it comes with playing the game a lot and just getting that experience. Mike, a lot of talk with uh, Trask and Baker, obviously. What have you learned from your experiences with Baker and what changes have you seen in Kyle this year compared to the last two? I mean, they've both been having a really good camp, and we're all learning a new, a new offense, and it's going to be much harder on quarterbacks, but they're making some really good plays. They're both really mobile. they both got really great arm talent, really really good young players. So you know, they're all they're doing well right now. So I'm looking forward to see who gets the job. What do you like about this new offense? It looks like there's more slants and more, more routes that are designed. Mm -hmm. When you catch the ball, your back isn't turned at the end zone. You got the ball, you can catch and run, get some yards after catch. What, I, I love what Dave has, has brought, you know, a different type of energy. Uh, he's a really interesting guy, really fun to be around. And um, in the past, I've been moved around a lot. Uh, but in this offense, I'm going to be even moved around even more. So it'll be harder to, to get a double team on me. And I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what we are able to do this year. I feel like every single coordinator that you've had or every quarterback or just Every couple of years, it seems like you've found new ways to evolve your game. And that's that's how you stay relevant in this league and successful. And of course, you also got to stay healthy, too. But just um, how can this new system uh, under Canales kind of help you evolve your game even more? I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm moved all over the place. I mean, there's things that there's there's a lot of routes. Everybody has the same plays pretty much. It's just when to call them, they're called different things. But there's a few different, a few routes that I've never seen before. And I look forward to running some of these routes. So, I mean, it's going to be hard to stop some of these routes. Well, can you talk cool. about the ball coming out of the hand of Baker and Trask and maybe how it's a little different or compared to other quarterbacks? The, man, I always get this question, and they're all NFL quarterbacks for a reason. They all throw a really great ball. Uh, Kyle's a little bit taller. Kyle's a few inches taller than Baker. So, I mean, you can see him in the pocket a little bit better. But other than that, I mean, they both throw a really, 
great ball. Earlier in the offseason, Rashad White did a presser, and he said that you know you came up to him and said, "I haven't been open this, this open in years." Obviously, you're moving around a lot, but just in you know first couple practices, uh, finally in the pads on. Do you feel that you know with the moving around, you're you're finding yourself in more advantage? Position. Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to be in more positions to, to get the ball. And you know, that's what I want. As a competitor, as a guy with my skill set, I want to be able to do everything. Uh, I, I don't want to be limited just deep in cuts, deep outs, and, and go balls. Like, I want to be able to do everything because that's what I can do. Mike, uh, there's a lot of rookies on the roster in the receiving room, uh, guys like Kane Jarrett, Kane Warren. Can you speak about how they've been improving on training camp and maybe what you've seen out of them that particularly has impressed you? This is wild. Like I've been getting this question since... 2015 now, what, what rookies look good in the room. And each year, there's so many great young players, and it's just great, just not just rookies, just free agent signs and everything. And there's guys that won't make the team, some really good players that won't make the team, players that won't ever play again. And it's sad, but it just shows the competitive, the competitiveness in the NFL. It's so hard to make it. You know, you're always competing. We've been competing since we were young to, to make the team and fight for spots. And now you're at the top of the top. And there's some really good players, but they they won't make the team. But all the rookies have been doing great. You know, I've never been a part of a bad rookie receiving group. I really haven't. Mike, Mike, speaking speaking of rookies, well, Mike, speaking of rookies, how do you balance chasing your own personal records while also being a veteran to these rookies and just the offense in general? I just be myself. I mean, it's easy. Anytime a younger player wants to wants advice, they just come to ask me. You know, I'm open. I'm o my door is always open for them. I'm real down to earth. Uh, you can ask most of the guys. Like I'm, a, I'm gonna give them to them straight. And a lot of the rookies are helping me out too. You know, just they give me motivation. They, they young and they got juice. And that, you know, seeing that motivates me even more. Mike, being a veteran on this team, you know, over the years, and people learn about you. And you're ingrained in this team, Tampa Bay. Somebody gives you a Harry Potter hat yesterday. Like yeah. people know who you are. What does that mean to be a part of a community for so long and having the people learn about not just the football player mm -hmm. but the real human being? That's what is one of the best parts about doing what I do. I mean, just fans that really look up to me and want to know me and have been following my career and, you know, things like that. Every time I'm at practice and training camp, somebody's giving me something or showing me a picture from nine to eight years ago. And it's cool to see things like that, man. It really it's really humbling and uh, it's, it's really an honor to have a great community like Tampa really rock with me and my family as they have. It's not just the fans, it's guys even in your own locker room. Like I was just talking to Cervasi Dennis about yeah. this, and he's like, I was in such awe. He's been making plays, too. Oh, Dennis, he's yeah, been making he a lot has, of plays. Yeah. So. But it's like good, really good player. He told me he was in awe of you, and he's starstruck by you, and he's like, I couldn't believe how approachable he is and, and how approachable yeah. some of these guys are. Just what does it mean, the fact that you're this guy now that these, these rookies are kind of clamoring to yeah. meet? I mean, I was the, the young player that looked up to you know a lot of veteran guys. I got the play with on my team and play against. And that's one of the coolest things. You know, now everybody's saying that they play with me on Madden and they saw me when they were in middle school and high school. It's wild to me, but it, it, it keeps me motivated that, you know, seeing all these young guys coming to come in the game and they're they're fighting and they're hungry and that makes me even more hungry. So it's very humbling. Mike, when you look at some of, of the of the legends, the guys that you're chasing in terms of the record book, Jerry Rice, Larry Fitzgerald, you know, Reggie Wayne, uh, Marvin Harrison. They played well into their 30s. Yeah. You're not even 30 yet. Mm -hmm. You're still in your prime, and you're going to be in your prime for a while. Have you I appreciate that confidence, man. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. Well, have you thought about, I want to play this game four more years? Five at more at years this point, um, I'm just taking it year by year. I mean, I, I feel very youthful. I feel better than I did when I was younger. Obviously, I've been on record saying that. Um, just being able to take care of my body. I'm way faster than I used to be. So. You know, God willing, if I don't have any big injuries, I mean, uh, I don't know how long I can play, but I want to play for a good while. Mike, I was going to say you're in a contract here now. I'm sure that you feel pretty confident you and the team will work things out on, on an extension. Yeah, obviously, it's, it's no secret that I want to be, you know, a buck for life. You know, it's rare for players to stay, especially this day and age, to stay on a team for, you know, as long as I have. And, you know, I want to just finish here. Uh, the Pro Football Hall of Fame is uh, just right around the corner. Do you watch that? Do you allow yourself to kind of you know, venture into that, like, you know, maybe, maybe this is something I can be part of. I know a lot of people. I, um, I've seen it. No, I've seen it. I've seen it here and there, but I don't just watch him like, oh, yeah, who's going into the Hall of Fame and things like that. Um, I'm going to watch for Rondé, though. I'm going to watch this one for Rondé. Uh, great guy. I've gotten to know him over the past 10 years. So deserving of this award. So shout out to Rondé. I'll be, I'll be watching that one.
Mike LaShawn McCoy recently said you were the best teammate he's ever had, saying how unselfish you were. What? Shady said that? He didn't say that. <laughs> uh, That's you, my guy. Uh, you were so unselfish with the ball, and he's used to being around receivers who mm -hmm. are a little bit selfish and always want the ball. Can you kind of speak to that? And, you know, you talked about how you, your priority is winning, not necessarily your personal game. Yeah. Can you kind of speak to that and, and what that means to you? Yeah, I've always been a guy that wanted to win because I've been on a team that's not winning. It's not as fun. I've had some decent individual success. I'd rather win all day. Um, Shady, that's my guy, man. I, that's a guy I've looked up to and was happy that I got to be able to play with him. Uh, he was so great for the locker room. You know, I miss him a lot. But, um, yeah, I miss I miss Shady. Great guy. Shout out to Shady for those, those uh, kind words. He had a lot of teammates, too, so that's, that's big. Mike, what do you really like about this team? This 2023 team. I mean, there's a lot still left. I mean, we've only been here, what, about a week now? So there's still a lot to learn about this team, but we're all competing. We're all hungry. A lot of guys are going to have to step up. You know, we lost a lot of guys. We lost, you know, Tom. So a lot of guys are going to have to step up, and I'm looking forward to being one of those guys that is going to step up. Mike, you've had some, some head coaches as offensive coordinator type guys, uh, you know, Bruce Arians, Dirk Cutter, et cetera. What do you like about Ty Bowles and his approach as, as a yeah. defensive head coach, but he's your head coach? Yeah, but when people say players coach, he's a players coach. Yeah, he is. He's awesome. Me and him have always had a great relationship, even when he wasn't the head guy. So, you know, when he got the when he got the job, nothing really changed for, for me and his relationship. So, I mean, he looks out for us in practice. He's played the game. He understands what our bodies need to go through, and he understands when our bodies need rest. So, he's been doing a great job. Love Coach Bowles. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.